Welcome, NorCal Carters. It is Monday, March 14, 2022, and tonight we have on a panel from PC Carding, Prairie City Carding out there in Rancho Cordova, and uh, everyone, I think you know who I am by now, Jason, NorCal Carters, and uh, so I won't waste a bunch of time, but uh, let's get our let's get our panel up here. Next up, we're going to have Ashley for the introduction. Hey, NorCal. All right. So over the weekend, we had lots of action at KPX, Prairie City. And the weekend before, we had some big fields at the Prairie City 206 Club. So we're here to talk about it. Um, I am reaching out to junior drivers who are on the standby list for the junior show. And um, so if you're waiting, you should hear from me this week. All right. So welcome, welcome. Go ahead, Jason. All right. And next up, we're going to have Donald Durbin, owner operator of Prairie City Carding. Donald, how are you? And welcome back to the show. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. All right. And real quick, shout out to John Smith. <laughs> if you're wondering why I said that, it's coming in on the comments. So yeah, no, thank you, Donald. You've had a busy couple of weeks and uh, actually, You've had a pretty busy 2022 so far. You had uh, the KPX boys at your track this past weekend. Uh, and the weekend before, you had your 206 four-stroke weekend. So uh, give us a quick little uh, rundown on that and um, let our viewers know what's going on at Prairie City before we bring in our other guests. It was great. Um, <clears throat> this time of year, you know, I'm learning as we go. Just... Uh, getting ready, getting excited for sure. And the track was in good order. Thanks to everybody helping me. Um, all our key players were there and we had a really, I'm very proud of our first club race this year. I don't even know if we should use that word anymore, but at the same time, it is a club. It is, it is local racing and I'm very grateful for everybody that came out and joined us. And then that was, a prelude to the KPX race that we just had this weekend. And it was also awesome. And just yeah, when I say awesome, what I'm most proud of is, is the environment. Um, the environment. I'm proud of the environment. It was great. Everybody was just kind and nice and calm. The racing was fantastic. The competition was unbelievable, but that can happen anywhere and everywhere. And then you can have problems, you can have spats, you can have issues. And I, I want to say I'm, I'm really proud we did not. Yeah, and that's, that's a definitely a, a tough part to manage when you have a bunch of flared up... Uh you know, energies in the pits and people are just, they want to go race. They want it. You know, we, we really don't know what's going on in each individual pit. So the fact that you're able to kind of keep, you know, the good atmosphere, keep, keep it local, but I mean, your turnout is huge. So it's not, it's not like a club race with 40 people. I mean, you're, we'll get into that a little bit later on, but I mean, you're, you're drawing close to a hundred, if not more than a hundred entries on just a split four stroke weekend. Yeah. We were, we were very lucky to have uh, 110 entries at our first race, and I don't see that going away. So I'm, yeah. I'm grateful. I'm not anything other than modest. It can disappear in a heartbeat, but I'm going to work as hard as I can to, to just keep everybody on that path. And I, I want to do everything in my power to make them feel comfortable and welcome and create that environment where you can compete, uh, where you can race, but also feel like you're protected and looked out for and you're listened. And that is very important. To me. Very cool. So we'll, we'll get into more of your, your program as the show goes on. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions coming in. We already have a lot of comments of, you know, the, the, the track's looking great. The turnout's looking great. The club race rocked. 
Uh, one one comment here. Excellent track promoter. So keep up the the good work there. I won't stop. All right. Now well, let's bring up uh, Travis Mitchell. So Travis, give us hey. a little background on yourself. Uh, you're a Prairie City Club member. I see you out there all the time. And yeah. uh, why don't you uh, give everyone that may not know who you are a quick introduction? But before you jump into that, is that a popcorn machine in the background? <laughs> yeah. Like you're in a theater. I, I'm at my girlfriend's house, and yeah, they have they call it the bonus room. I guess it's basically a theater slash office so i've got this fancy computer with a pretty good uh camera <laughs> yeah we'll just we'll leave it at theater you're in the theater so yeah. travis introduce yep. yourself to all of our uh, listeners and watchers hey so um i'm travis I, ra I race at pro city pretty often um originally from england as you can tell by the accent um been racing since i was eight years old it's yeah pretty good racing over in england but this racing i mean Pro City, for being such a small track, it's very impressive. Donald's done such an amazing job. Um, you know, KPX, they always bring really good competition. But even the uh, club races, it's difficult, especially in the four strokes. So, yeah. And, and what class do you run? So give the listeners yep. uh, a hint at what you run out there. So this year we're doing the K100, which they're calling the Pro 100 now, and the uh, Senior 206. All right. Very good. So thank you for the introduction. And last yep. but not least, we have Trenton Healy. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing pretty good. How about you? I'm doing good. Uh, let's see. Is there a way we can get a little more volume out of your mic? Um, or you can yell at us. I could probably yell at you guys. Yeah, there you go. Okay, give me one. Okay, let's try that. Go for it. Okay, well, my name is Trenton. Trenton. Okay, my name's Trenton. Um, I usually race at Prairie City, but I travel around with the KPX in the Junior 2 206 class. Very cool. Now, what, would you say uh, Prairie City is your home track, or where's your home track? Um, I would say Prairie City is my home track, um, mostly, but... We, we travel around, and this is my mechanic. That's your mechanic? <laughs> your sound producer? Yeah. Yeah. I think we got your mic figured out on this side. Okay. Oh. So, so I know you, you didn't really want to go down this avenue, but, but I'm doing it anyway for, for a very specific reason. On YouTube, what is your handle? Um, my handle is Connor's Bald Spot. Connor's Bald Spot. So I, have to, I had to ask you about a month ago, who's Connor? And why are you Connor's bald spot handle? So there, there's there's a reason I want you to explain that. So explain Connor's bald spot. Why is that your handle on YouTube? Um. Well, I was I always watch the Cart Chaser podcast, and I Connor Zilich is he races nationally, and he's a pretty good racer throughout the sport. And I was just it thought it was really funny and. I just took a screenshot of the live stream and just decided to use it as my YouTube handle. Well, you know, it's pretty catchy. And what really, what really catched or caught me, my English is terrible. Kids stay in school. Um, what really caught me when you told me who Connor was, once I heard the name, it's like, Oh, I know who Connor is. And I definitely know Connor through the uh, cart chaser through their live stream stuff and their podcasting stuff. But the fact that you're here in California, Connor's out there on the East Coast, we're using all this technology for karting, and you stole a clip from Kart Chaser as your handle called Connor's Bald Spot. And I think if that doesn't wake us old people up as to the power of, inter of the internet, of social media, et cetera, then just close your doors. If you're an if you're an industry member and you don't get that, just close your door now. Save yourself money. Close your door. Because Trenton, how old are you? Um, I'm 15. You're 15. How old's Connor? Uh, maybe 16, maybe 17. I think he's 16. Maybe, yeah, he's somewhere in that 15 or 16 range. 
and the fact that you're using his name and his picture with your own handle attached to it to me i i'm so impressed by that and i, and I just i just go wow like that that's just really the power of of social media and the internet and everything else so uh th- that's the reason i wanted to go down the avenue i think it's great and uh it's pretty it's pretty comical um let's see here let's bring everybody up boom let's try it. there we go we'll do that one now we'll do that one zoom in zoom out. i'll take this off oh there you go. what was that what did you just take off well there was a comment saying jason just talk about how well he drove last weekend nah we're not going to do that so Trenton, tell us how did you get into karting? Like how did you find Prairie City? Um, so my dad just he used to race back in the day. Um, just a Stockton club when there used to be an A and B group, like a A main and a B main, and you had to race your way into the A main. So it was really big over at Stockton. And he really just did some like IKF regional stuff, a couple grand nationals. Um but yeah, that's that's really what he did, and then he got out of it when I was born, because money has to go somewhere, and we just he I he took me to his buddy's um, micro sprint car race because he used to race with him, and I was working there, and I was the mud scraper. If you know dirt racing, you always got to scrape the mud off and put baby oil on the sprint car so the mud doesn't stick as easy. And I really just liked it. And I, I told, I basically told my dad, I want to race. And my grandpa has had, had go-karts sitting in his garage. And we still did a rocket kid cart off his garage wall. And then I believe we got the engine freshened up. We put it on the go-kart. And my dad told me, um, we went out to Stockton. And he said, you're not going to race till you, till either your tires screech or you go around the whole track full throttle. And we did that for about six months and then we started racing. Awesome. At Stockton, you said? Um, we, we There wasn't really a lot of racing in Stockton. So we actually started in Davis. And then in 2017, we started going to Prairie City before Donald owned the track. And we, we just made that our stopping grounds and, it's a really great track with many different layouts and it's, it's really, I almost want to say the center of go-kart racing in NorCal. It is. All right. We're bringing on a special guest. One that was not introduced cause he's coming in, coming in hot. Are you ready? We got Steven Iser coming in to talk about, senior or i'm sorry junior racing with trenton healy um before i get into that though travis i do remember you explaining how did you get how did you get started at prairie city um so my whole family they've been racing um so my dad's side died the american side my mother's side, they're the English side. So my dad's side, they've always been racing over here. Uh, my grandpa, he's been in racing a long time. He's He was competing back in IKF before Duffy was a thing because he was still racing. So it's it's been uh, through the generations they've been racing at Prior City. So I kind of just, you know, followed in their footsteps. And it's our local, it's like 10 minutes away from where I live. So it's kind of a, it's, yeah, we're lucky. It's a 10-minute drive, and I get to go race around the go-kart track, so it's fun. Perfect. All right. Well, we're glad to we're glad to have you guys. All right. So that we are going to get a junior update from Trenton Healy and Steven Iser. What's been going on in the junior scene at Prairie City? Let's hear it. So Junior's been doing really well at Senior. I mean, not at Senior, at Prairie City. Um, we've always had upwards of 20 entries, even more sometimes. Um, so me and Steven are usually up there in the front, dicing it up with a couple other Junior drivers. And 
that's that's really what we do. Me and me and senior are kind of like the red shirts in the junior cl- class, the like seniors of the junior class, if you say so. Um, so but, you're getting old. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Hey, yeah. Well, I do have to say, Steven has been on the show before, and he did say that his goal was to win them all. So it's been great watching you two kind of dice back and forth. And Steven, come on, come on, unmute. Let us know how juniors have been going at Prairie City. And call out any juniors that you feel should be at Prairie City. Yeah, um, it's Prairie City's been going good. The KPX race wasn't a great turnout, but the club race was really good. Um, you know, there are some drivers that we're trying to get into the junior 206 class. Um, some that race two stroke. Um, yeah, uh, from Sonoma, my teammate Max Altman. Uh, we're trying to get him out, drive a uh, 206 cart at Prairie City. So. Excellent. Are you going to be doing all the KPXs? Um, I'm not sure yet, but I think I know. <clears throat> okay. Because I think we talked about that, and you, I think you said it was just the um, Prairie City ones, I believe. Trenton, are you going to race all the KPX ones? Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try and do all the KPX races. Um, we're gonna do all the Prairie City Club races because they're amazing, and I just love the way they're ran. And it's not, it's not far away, but it's only an hour and thirty minutes away. And then we stay at my grandma's house, so it's it's a really great time going out to Donald's place. And we may do a couple races um, out of state. We don't know yet, out in Oregon or other places like Arizona or somewhere like that. All right. Which track in Oregon? Um, Medford. Medford. All right. I've been there. I've I've been there once before in 2018. Yeah. All right. I I won't tell you when I went there because then I aged myself. But that is such a fun, beautiful track. Travis, we have a question for you. Did you ever cart in the U.K.? If so, what are some difference between the U.S. and the U.K. karting? Yeah, I raced uh, pretty much my, most of my life over there. Um, geez. Very, very professional in uh, pretty much the whole of Europe. It's very professional. The teams are huge. The tracks are pretty amazing. Um, there's also some pretty amazing tracks here. It's just they're so spread out, so I haven't been able to experience them all yet. Because in England, we raced a lot of different series, and it was probably a 45-minute drive to each one. Uh, very good drivers. There's always at least 30-plus drivers in each class. Sometimes there's more. Sometimes it's crazy. Um, but if I'm being honest, when I was coming over here, after racing Engl- in England, I was like, I've got this. It's going to be super easy after racing in the rain against all these amazing drivers. It's not been easy. I've had to basically relearn everything all over again. It's... Yeah, the drivers over here are pretty amazing. So we'll just see when it finally rains. Well, then we'll <laughs> then then we'll do a rain race and see. Yeah, I might have lost it. <laughs> it hey, it is rainy in Florida where there are carts. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit that's a bit of a drive. <laughs> yes. All right. So shout out Trenton's the champ, Barry Barnwell. All right. So, Travis, can you tell us about um, how seniors have been going? How's the competition in there? Do you know anybody that you feel should be out racing seniors? Trenton and Steven. (laughs) Move up to seniors, guys. (laughs) We'll be there next year. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Um, Seniors, it's crazy. There's a lot of really good drivers. I think yeah, it's amazing. That's why we need to get Steven and Trenton and the seniors to see uh, how you guys will do because it's pretty tough. It's very, I mean, there's always at least from 20 to 30 drivers. I think in the club race, it was 27. At KPX, I think it was also 27. 
which is pretty amazing for um, such a small track that we fit that many drivers on it. So, yeah, it's always really good racing. The, uh, the KPX race was probably one of my... Uh, between one of my favorites and also one of my most over overtakes I've ever done in one race <laughs> on the same driver. Me and him were back and forth the entire time. It was... We'll probably get into it later, but it was an amazing race. So, yeah, I'm very happy with the racing in seniors. So who was the driver you were dicing with? Tyler Reagan in the 206. Okay. Yeah, it was – I was very, very impressed with – I mean, he's obviously an amazing driver, a very good driver, a lot of experience. But the uh, the whole race, we were going back and forth from first to second. It was, And there was a few drivers behind us. Um I was scared we are going to get in the mix as well, make it even more challenging. But, yeah, it was just me and him going back and forth. There were very clean overtakes between both of us because, you know, sometimes you can get frustrated and kind of just go for one when it's not there. No matter what, every single overtake, very clean. We kept going, and it was down to the last straightaway. It was – so I ended up getting the win by 12 milliseconds down the straight. So that's how close it was the whole time. Yeah. It was crazy. Well, well, we were that. we were watching it at home, and it was literally like, oh my gosh, they were right next to each other because we're friends with Tyler yeah. Agan as well. So we were following yeah. along, and it was like, who won? Who won? Tell I us. Know. Well, I had no idea. I mean, I I was looking at the uh, the front nose cone, so I can't, when I saw the uh, start finish, I was like, I'm pretty sure I got it, but I I didn't even care because I was like, that was such good racing. That was the fun part, and I was really happy with him. I was just, yeah, straight away said good job. I mean, that was one of the most fun races ever, and that's kind of what it's all about, it's having fun. So, yes, yeah. yes, agreed. So how deep did you go into turn one after the checkered to make sure you had the win? <laughs> well, I straight away looked back and gave him a thumbs up, like, that was awesome. I was, and then I was like, okay, time to, uh, <laughs> time time to, to slow down. Breaks. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, for those who don't know, it's like you exit Perry City at the end of the straightaway, right into mm -hmm. the scale house. So it's yep. it, it's fairly easy to come in hot if you're not paying attention. Yeah. All right, we got a couple shout outs for the Durbin family. Um, taking over Perry City. It's all about the family now. Credit to Donald and his crew. So Donald, we're hearing all all good things. All good things. Um. Okay, so we got some more comments. Junior 2 needs more drivers, as Jason would say. If we each bring one person into karting this year, we will double in size. Thank you, RC, RCs and go-karts for watching the show and, and listening to Jason. <laughs> All right, we got Mark Fox. The 206 seniors at PC are an amazing group of kart racers. The senior race at KPX was one of the best kart races I've ever seen. Well, we got Travis Mitchell here to talk about it. So any other questions? Oh, okay, here we go. So we got a question for Donald. Donald, what's it like to be able to put on an environment that everyone loves to be a part of? Thank you, Josh. It's uh, overwhelmingly awesome. Um, when I'm, I find myself running to the bathroom to go restock it with toilet paper and someone stops me and they're like, Donald, Donald, I just wanted to say, you know, thank you. And that means the world to me which is why I hope that your kids have kids before I leave that place because I'm not going anywhere. I really, really enjoy what I'm doing. Um, what am I trying to say? This is my dream job and, and you know that my friend, but this is my dream job. And what I get out of it is, is seeing when I'm walking up aisle one, aisle two, aisle three is just camaraderie, uh, shaking hands, fist pumps. And yes, it, it's not going to make me change my hat size. None of this is going to go to my head. I assure you that, but it makes me feel good 
when someone pulls me aside and either quietly or just right there just says, you know, thank you. Um, we haven't been to a race in a while that we've really had a great time or, or maybe they have, I mean, there's not, there's not bad racing going on anywhere. Um, it's all good. You know, all these tracks are doing a really good job. So I don't want to even go down that rabbit hole. Um, I just love this sport. I do. And I love what it brings out of people because we get to compete and that's strong and hard and let's go. I want to win. Um, but when you don't win, how do you carry yourself? How do you react? And that shows a lot of character. And just like to Travis's point, you know, it was close. Um, I was proud of that top 10, to be honest with you. The, I mean, I was fortunate enough to be standing up on my perch and just being an assistant watchful eye. And uh, it was really amazing to, to see that kind of competition. But I will say what impressed me the most with Trenton's class and Travis's class and, and many others was when you get some real poised, a talented men and women out there driving against each other, um, it absolutely makes a show because there's a difference between maybe learning how to get past and how to pass and how to accept it and how to be okay with allowing this move to happen. And there's a hundred percent difference between someone who's smart enough like Trenton and Travis and many, many others out there to say, you know what? go ahead because I'm going to slip right in behind you and can what happened to the screen? Oh, I just, I brought the track. <laughs> yeah. Jason's bringing All up right. the track. So now. then, uh, then what happens, what happens when they allow that to happen is you get an amazing event or race. And for us <clears throat> in the bleachers and the stands on the fence, up on a up on a pallet to watch is an incredible amount of talent with enough poise and respect for each other to go back and forth half a dozen times in three laps and i think that is the most incredible thing to watch and be a part of but uh back to josh's question how does well, it feel well we did have another question come in for, for you um, do you would do you ever want to race with these guys? <laughs> um, Jeff is another huge part of our program and a great man. Uh, quick answer off the hip. Yeah, that'd be so fun. <laughs> I was gonna say I saw that laugh. I saw that laugh, and I know that the answer is yes. <laughs> Second answer. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> I have no desire to go out and no. beat your customers. Yes. <laughs> it's so fun. It's so fun. Like people ask me all the time, like, hey, have you ever raced? I'm like, oh, that's true. It's been about 10 years since I've done anything. So I will answer. I will answer in a couple different phrases. One is um, I really enjoy racing and I enjoy that kind of racing. And it's been a little while since that kind of racing has existed. It's really frustrating for everybody and anybody to go out and feel like I've got enough respect to race clean and hard. And I'm going to, you know, this move, that move, Travis's passes on the track uh, and Trenton's and Stevens and Jacinta, proud of that young lady, um, are exactly what I like to do and, and some of my favorite spots. And sometimes you end up racing against folks that either are what I'm talking about at the driver's meeting, you know, will not let it happen. And 
So my, my biggest fear is, you know, one day it's like, hey, this will be fun. Let me put this microphone down, put on a helmet, go out in a go-kart that's prepared and let's have fun. Not like, let me show you how it's done. No, I'm just a dude who's rusty. I need WD-40 before I even go out there. I would love to participate in it <clears throat> if that kind of quality of racing can go because I share the same amount of respect. If you got me, it's yours. But when I have it, please, you know, share the same amount of respect. That is so fun. Um, and it doesn't always happen. And then, and then the consequence come. Well, he just slammed into the back of me. So no, I'm not going to expose myself to any of that because we've got some, so we've got some momentum going. Uh, I will not promise anything, but I would love to find the time it, it and and i'm not saying i'm too busy to do it but i would love to stumble across that weekend where it's like wow everything is going really well let's participate with them but i i'm going to tell you the truth right now my biggest fear is that or worry is uh if anything were to happen, I don't want to lose a friend and I, I'm not going to do that. So probably not. So there's Donald if, being that you, you're watching a lot of races over the past 10 years, being away from the seat. When you watch the senior class, we're not, we're not going to talk about masters, Josh Veloz. We're going to talk about the senior <laughs> class. ran the seniors. Josh did. did a great job in the seniors. He did run senior, but I, I think he was the one that commented on Master. Oh, I'm sorry, as Yazenbach said, join Masters. Sorry, Yazenbach. We're, we're not talking about uh, Masters for Donald Durbin here. We're talking about senior. If you were to look at the track and the competitors you had at your first club race, where would you rank Donald Durbin Jr.? On the podium, top five, top ten? Where, where, would, you, where would you put yourself? Just – I would be fortunate. I would. I would feel fortunate enough to keep up with all of them because they're doing an amazing job, and all of them are putting in a lot of hard work. So I would feel really lucky to be able to keep up with them, and that's it. So if you came in, if you came home in fifth, you'd be pretty stoked. Absolutely. All right. I had to ask because we've all gone through that phase of watching the races and what I would do, what I wouldn't do. And, it, you know, the longer we stay out of the cart, the harder it gets. But um, I always ask, I, I love asking veterans that question. Yeah. I think a lot of people know me well enough that uh, I'm going to talk about that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we do have a question for Steven, but I'm also going to ask it to Trenton as well. So as a longtime Carter, what advice would you give some of the new drivers getting into the KPX regional um, level racing in juniors? So what advice do you have for kids that are moving up to, ju um, to juniors into where you are now? You can go first, Stephen. <clears throat> I'd just say... Um... Don't get intimidated by the older kids because you're all just racing for the same thing and you could be just as fast as them and you could race the same and you can, you know, be there winning, you know. Yeah. So what are things that you do, Stephen, that kind of get you ready for races? whether that be like working out, eating better, um, anything like any, anything like that regimens. I mean, yeah, I eat better sometimes. Like I had to lose a lot of weight and before race weekend, I'll eat better than usual. So yeah. Get a good night's sleep. Yeah. All right. So Trenton, for you, what advice would you give some of the new drivers getting into the KPX regional racing in junior two? So where you, where you guys are now? Um, I, I would probably say don't be in, uh, intimidated of being a little off pace because 
as probably a lot of people know, um, I kind of sucked in 2019 and 20, uh, 20, not 2018, 2019 and the very beginning of 2020. I wasn't, I wasn't definitely the best out there. Um, but yeah, just don't let your confidence get low. Um, always strive to do better every single time you go on the track. Um, again, don't get intimidated by bigger kids or kids that are faster than you or people that don't drive the way you want them to drive you. And just a big thing is just keeping your confidence up. Don't be like, oh, man, I'm, I'm not doing too good. And then get low on yourself. Okay, great advice, guys. Um, Travis, can you kind of talk about um, what advice you would give new drivers getting into the KPX regional in seniors? Uh, so for the seniors, they probably had a bit of experience in juniors, so you might be pretty okay on pace. Uh, similar with the juniors, just don't be super intimidated because it can go from, you know, still younger drivers all the way up to really experienced drivers um, that are pretty, yeah, pretty quick. So just don't be intimidated. Um, just try and learn. As Donald was saying, respect. If someone's overtaking you, you kind of, you know, let it happen. And if you're quick enough to overtake them again later on in the race, you can do that. And you just be smart. You don't need to wreck <laughs> trying to keep a position if you know there's someone coming up behind you. Um, yeah, just learn because, you know, you can learn a lot just from even being, find a friend in a senior class and yeah, learn with them because you'll get better pretty quick. Good advice. Good advice. So Travis, I have a quick question for you for um, being that you raced over in England. I'm going to mm -hmm. make the assumption that the tracks over there are CIK sanctioned. What does that mean? <laughs> you, you don't know what CIK is? I know what are, it is, are the tracks over there wider and the curbs are a lot more drivable compared to like in NorCal? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, the whole track, the curbs, uh, there's a lot more rules that I didn't really understand because I was still kind of younger there. But yeah, I mean, the curbs, they're nice. <laughs> this Everything was just, it was really nice and very, as I was saying, very professional. There was perfect white lines. So, you know, if all any four of your tires are over there at any point straight away, you're getting a time penalty. There's no kind of arguing with that. Um, so I guess, yeah. Yeah. I mean, CIK tracks for those who don't know, they, they're just very rigid on their standards in order to yeah. have a CIK yeah. badge on it. Um, and so when you were over in England, what, what was the engine package and what age group were you in when you left England? Uh, when I left, so I was in the X30 senior, which okay. was, Definitely, it was probably the biggest class. Well, it was the biggest class. Um, the seniors, I, th I can't remember the age you start in seniors, but I got into seniors as soon as I could. I was pretty young because my birthday, it's on New Year's Eve, like the very last day. So I was lucky enough to, for some reason, I'm able to get in like a year earlier because of something. I can't remember what it's been a while, but I moved up seniors pretty young and they're, they're pretty fast, those senior X30 cars, especially some of the long straights in England. You can get pretty up there on the on the speed so yeah it was a really fun class okay and that's perfect because that's exactly where i wanted to go being that yep over here x30 is get rid of the shifters you know we're not going to talk about the shifter stuff right now mm -hmm. the x30 is kind of that the top you have x30 you have yeah. the vortex rock gp mm -hmm. that's i mean clutch cart that's that's where you're going to go if you're sprint racing now you're you're here in california you're in norcal you're racing at prairie city and, and earlier, you were just saying how great the racing was in the four-stroke class. Yeah. How would you compare our NorCal tracks? Because a lot of the NorCal tracks are going to be very similar to Prairie City, with the exception of Sonoma. Mm -hmm. How would you compare the type of racing with the four-stroke stuff at Prairie City versus over in England on a CIK track with an X30? Wow. So the four-strokes... So that's not kind of really a thing in England. So um, like the four strokes in England, it's kind of like a cadet class. Mm -hmm. um, and then you move up and kind of as you move up, you kind of go from the X30 juniors, which are a bit slower, and then the seniors, and you kind of just move your way up like speed wise. But then here, they kind of have another option where, yeah, you can go in a four stroke and it's really close racing, like really, really close. 
So to compare them, I mean, they're still amazing racing. As I was saying over there, it's just really good, really close. Even in the faster carts, you can still be nose to tail pretty much the whole race, overtaking like crazy. Um, but yeah, the Senior Tour 6s, it's still probably the closest racing you can get. So if you want to watch a really fun race, then the Senior Tour 6s, yeah, it's going to be fun no matter what. So, but How would you say good. you've had to adapt your driving style coming from the – you know, X30, let, let's just say it has 35 horsepower just for number's mm -hmm. sake. And whatever the Briggs has, I don't know, 10 or 12. It's how would you say the not not the sense of speed, but the the, the way you drive the two, mm -hmm. how would you say they differ or they're the same? It's very different. So I I mean I wasn't even expecting to do two oh six. It was kind of just like a like not even halfway through last year, at the very end of last year, I did like the last two races or three races. Um, and straight away, I mean, I had to learn a lot because it's just so different. Like, the way you break is the main difference is, yeah, how you break um, your lines and how much you're, you're turning in the KA car. I can make so say there's a turn. I can go like that and then kind of straight in the steering wheel in the 206. If it's a left hander, you kind of turning through that left-hander so you got to change everything um so that's why even racing in both classes you kind of have to have like two different lines in your head two different braking spots in your head you got to have a lot of different things calculated differently for each classes so it's very different yeah and i think it's important for people to understand you know as you me personally my my opinion is the engine, the track really detects, or not detects, um, determines the engine you should be running for good racing. Because, mm -hmm. um, again, a lot of our NorCal tracks are a lot smaller. They're a lot tighter. And some people will instantly go into, oh, that's just a tight track. Well, everyone's on the same track. Everyone has the same parameters to work with. And I think that's why the Briggs has been so successful, uh, especially in our region with very tight racing, et cetera. Uh, mm -hmm. And then you have the experience of both. I mean, it's yeah. not many people, you know, that we talk to have not just in Europe, but even in America where they've been to all these different tracks that are more of a CIK type track. Um, yeah. So it's really good to hear that you, you have the experience at both places at multiple tracks and it's, you're, you're really enthusiastic about how good the racing is and how good the drivers are with the four yeah. stroke stuff. Yep. Yeah. Travis, what um, chassis were you on in the UK versus what chassis are you on now? Um, so in England for the X30, it was a Mad Croc. So I was on the team Croc Promotion. It was an amazing team. And since I've left, I mean, they just, it was kind of like a rising team, which didn't have too many drivers, but it was, a. I mean, we were you know, winning a lot of races. We were doing really good. And now they're doing really well. They're all over Europe. They're racing in all the European series, winning. They won the uh, World Championships this year in the junior class. They're just doing really good. So that it was a good car. Um, so it was a Mad Croc chassis for the X30 over there. Um, when I came here, I was still on the Mad Croc chassis. Um, in the when I first came, I was still doing X30, some scooter races, and I did Super Nets. So that was still on the Mad Croc, um, and then. Just in like last year, they changed it from Mad Croc to it's called an AK USA. So it's a, it's, I mean, I don't really know any other people that race on it at Pro City, or really, there's not that many of them. So when people see it, they're like, this is a, it's way different. The, the way it's, I mean, just everything. It's got this weird bar that people look at it and they're like, what is that there? What does that do? It makes a big difference. So, um, yeah, it's an AK USA that I'm racing right now in the KA class, and then a barrel in the 206 class. Okay, we got another question as well. Is it more expensive to race in Europe than in the US? <sighs> Racing is just expensive in general. Um, I would say because I was racing a lot more in, in England than yes, but I mean, you can go anywhere and it's kind of however much you want to spend. So if we were on a team, which is the main reason why it kind of was more expensive, we're on the team, 
during the race weekends, you know, you go through the tires because there was a lot of drivers as well. And the tracks are pretty big. You know, sometimes you'll go through like an axle or two and that's a lot of money just in. So, but it kind of depends. I mean, racing, you can go anywhere, but the one reason why it might get more expensive here for us is when we start traveling, that's when it will be way more than the UK side of things. Cause in, in England, it was, we drive 40 minutes and we were at this track on the east side, which was amazing. This side, this track up north, which is another amazing track. And here you kind of have to travel, if not take a plane somewhere. So yeah, yeah it's pretty expensive both, both places. All right, another one. Travis, you always carry yourself like a quality young man slash sportsman. What's your favorite thing about California and what do you miss most about the UK? Um, probably the weather about California. The weather's, oh, especially this time of the year, it's really nice. Um, oh, and thank you, by the way. That's very nice of you. Um, I miss, the main thing I miss about the UK is just my family. I left two years ago. Um, my mom, that side, they're all English. Um, and I just wanted to come here for the racing, for to see my other side of the family. For There's a lot of opportunities here. So I moved here and then COVID happened. So I have been kind of stuck here. So actually on Thursday, so this Thursday, I leave to see them for the first time in two years. So it's going to be, it's going to be crazy because a lot has changed. So wow. yeah, it'll be fun when I go back. So yeah, that's fun. All right, um, junior guys. So we got Trenton and Steven. What is your favorite track in California and why? Um, well, it's probably a pretty obvious answer, but Pretty City is my favorite track because I'm, I'm really, really, really good at it. And um, yeah, I, I enjoy Davis. Um, we don't really race much at Dixon, but Everywhere in California is really, really decent. It's not like a track that's like, oh, I don't like that track. That track's blah, 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 blah. But I would probably have to say Prairie City just because overall it's a great atmosphere. We're, we're not at the track till 7.30 doing trophies. We're out of there by 4.35. Um, we only live an hour and a half away. It's and there's just so many different layouts you can run. It's you you can almost it's almost like going to five different tracks over a whole year just at Prairie City. Yeah, that's true. And the different layouts too. Um, Steven, your favorite NorCal track in California and why? Um, my favorite NorCal track is Prairie City. It's my home track. It's my favorite two hundred six track. It's too tight for two stroke, but for 206, it's definitely Pretty City. And for a two stroke, it's probably Sonoma or Button Willow. All right, interesting. All right, we did have a question come in. Ste oh, <laughs> shout out, Mama Healy. Um, Steven and Trenton, would you guys be willing to help junior kart drivers in the sport? With things such as track lines and advice. Steven, you can answer first and then I'll get put Trenton back up. I mean, for sure I would, but you know, sometimes people will come up to me and ask if I could do a lead and follow with them. Um, they get better by a, about a second every time. And I feel really good about myself, and I like to see them do good in their class. Excellent. Good answer, Steven. All right, Trenton. So, yeah, um, I'm, I, I've been willing to help people. Like, um, a lot of the more junior one drivers um, or very beginner junior two drivers, um, but I've been – I've been kind of helping um, Mason Mitchell um, with Racer Motorsports. We're really good friends with them and kind of like partners with them. So we help them a lot. And there's Ryan of Racer Motorsports. So, yeah, I've been helping Mason a lot. And 
Um, I'm willing to help anyone else in the sport. I'm not like, no, these are my lines. Like, I'm too good for that, or I, I'll never put myself up to that, um, especially on this level. Um, but, yeah, I'm willing to give advice to anyone that is willing to take it. Perfect. Great. So guys, we, uh, um, real quickly, guys... we have a question from John Smith. Do we get that up yet? Um, I'm getting it. Yes. <laughs> Are any, Are any going to race you... at Sonoma for the club race or the challenge? I mean, if if Sonoma had a four-stroke class, maybe. Are you strictly four-stroke, Trenton, right yep. now? That's your package? Okay. Icer? Well, we are not going to Sonoma this weekend for the Cesar race. We are going to the Challenge America's race, trying to finish up the championship. All right. And then we had uh, Travis. He's taken off, and he's heading back to the U.K. Yeah, I wish I could do that race. I haven't been there yet. Um, and, yeah, just the timing. So, yeah. It's fun. All right, um, Donald, we have a question from you from an old friend. Um, what are your keys to making club racing enjoyable for both the casual driver? Oh, I'm supposed to be like this casual driver and the hardcore racer crowd. Hey, Corey. Hey, Corey. Uh, <clears throat> on a daily basis, you know, throughout the week, I think it's just reading the room. Um, there's a lot of great people. Like today, for instance, I thought, oh, good. You know, the race is over last night. I'm going to go there. I'm going to pick up trash and polish things up and clean up. And then I was blessed to have a slew of uh, what's it, casual drivers, to use your words. And I, and I appreciate that's a good word. But they're actually just great people who want to come and use the track and have a good time. So... Uh, luckily I have some help and they helped me clean up, but we kept an eye on them, helped them. Um, what are the keys? It, it's basically just keeping an eye on everything. We also had a veteran at the track today and it was a matter of, you know, Hey, I really need to, well, actually no words were said, but I read the room and it was like, okay, we need to figure out a problem. We need to figure out what's going on with a cart, a chassis, and to go out there and maybe not get any, I'm going to say, hard laps. It was, it was really easy just to say, all right, guys, come on off. Let's take a break. Let me come chat with you. And then, boom, you know, the veteran can go out, do their thing, come in. The rest of the world can go out. There's no segregation. There's no... It's not your turn. It's not, no, oh, you can't come today. We need to make sure that everybody feels comfortable and welcome and maybe spin it off as like, hey, let's go watch, you know, this driver for a minute. Let's go out in the infield, check it out. And it's kind of a, an easy way to break things up. Now, it's maybe more difficult when there's 60 carts at the track on a practice day. But what we do all the time is i'm going to use that word read the room again or that sentence we we'll say all right we've got 15 cadets we've got 2206s and we've got 15 tags and shifters so let's see how that all blends okay not good um boom tags and shifters you're up now kid carts you're up next um 206 and cadet you're up next all right whoops I saw that session and we've got a whole bunch of Trenton Healy's and Steven Eiserts on the track. So let's split the cadets and the 206s. And honestly, that's my job. My job is to make sure that if you're going to come out to the track, you know, uh, let's say you're going to a track and you got a key to the gate, you open the gate, you go in and there's 20 people there and nobody's sure when to go. They can figure it out, but, here we go. My job, uh, we install the PA system, is to split it up, make it easy. Nobody wants to drive for 30 minutes at a time. I mean, one, it's almost impossible. And two, there's things to do to your cart. So with that being said, 
We run sessions. I will never hold motorcycles at our track ever, ever. Um, we are lucky to have a lot of carts and fortunate enough to have a rental cart field that helps move everything along, you know, anyway, with that being said, that's enough, that's enough interruption. So I will never diversify any further. I want to make sure that everybody shows up, they get talked to, they get their hand shaked and they get a quality day at the track. So I think that's my recipe. Yeah. And then some advice that came in is we can all help out if we tell all of our friends about the rental carts at Prairie City. And that would introduce a lot of people to our sports, like letting people know about this podcast. Shout out, Edson <laughs> Mitchell. Um, yeah. But yeah. So let's talk about the um, rental carts and how that kind of feeds into Prairie City. I'll do that for sure, but I've been I've been uh, patiently. I want to get back to Barry Barnwell's comment because it was really good, um, and I think he's a smart man who knows how to kind of open up a little can. And he was waiting for somebody to run with it. Um, sometimes or all the time, when we reference KPX or look, KPX, there's a stigma. It's a fantastic series, lots of fun really well done but it's 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 labeled as well when you're ready or maybe on your third year or it's for the pros um i want to go ahead and just say it's it's not it's a really good series and it's strong and the competitors are there but when you you should go I'm going back to how do we get more juniors? How do, that wasn't even the question. How do we introduce? So let's change our verbiage from, well, you know, when you're ready to just go drive more, enter more races. If your time and, and, you know, I hate the word, but budget allows, it's not more expensive. It's just more races, but if you can, go do it. That's how you're going to get better. That's how you're going to improve. Uh, you can always come to our race. I would love to have you and they're there. Um, but I think they should, they, the drivers who we just built their cart for, you know, a year ago who might've gotten that vibe, like, well, I'm not ready for that. Well, heck yeah, you are. You just entered our race and you did great. So go and, and participate. And the more seat time, all of you guys on this panel can, can absolutely relate that if you can stay in the seat, um, practicing is one thing. Alone is not very productive when you're learning because you're going to hit that, that wall of like, I don't even know what else I'm supposed to do. But if you can convince Trenton or Travis or Steven to come out, then that's great. But what you can do free basically is continue to enter those races or go to those practice days because uh, every series needs our support, uh, ours as being the racers. Every series needs our support. There is no series that you do not belong at. And I, I'm talking to everybody out there. There is no series that you should feel like you do not belong. You might not be ready to win, but nobody is. You know, there was many instances in the last couple of weekends where cars shuffled from fifth to 10th to second to the win, or from 26th to 13th to sixth. Nobody's ready or premeditated their weekend and said, you know, I'm good to go here. We, there's a lot of people that went to all of these races expecting a good shot at the podium and didn't. That doesn't make them good or bad. That means there's a strong field. Mm -hmm. um, 
So again, thanks Barry for bringing that up because I know for a fact, well, excuse me, that sounds terrible. I know that there is an abundant amount of people contrary to the negativity on social media about NorCal and what's going on with their numbers. And we, you know, that's ridiculous. There's actually just a little bit of, well, we'll skip that one because somebody told us we weren't ready for it and we'll wait, even though they would love to go. So let's go to Davis. The next KPX race is at Davis. Go to Davis, put some laps in, message Trenton, Travis, Stephen, Jacinta, anybody. Mm -hmm. They'll all be there practicing because they're not going to go there unprepared because none of us are that good to show up on Sunday and race. We all go practice. Go there, get some laps in, try it. It will be fun. So I, I want to add a little bit to that where, you know, back in, you know, for Ashley, Donald and myself, we, we remember region 11 IKF. And for us, region 11 IKF was the ultra competitive regional series. And when I remember when I first started in karting, my home track was Dixon Kart Club. And I was going to go to Formula One or IndyCar, whatever I was going to do at that age. That's where I was going. So how do I get in the most competitive series now? And I remember a lot of people told me at Dixon, say, hey, why don't you get some more laps here at Dixon before you worry about a regional race? But when that regional race comes to your home track, support it and see how you do. And um, at that time, Donald was he's younger than me. And he was a very competitive regional driver. And you see these drivers come in and you're still a club person. You're still getting your laps in, you're st but you're, you're doing it in a track you're familiar with. And then the big boys come into town and you just see where you're at. And when I started running regional stuff, every single track we went to, we always had that club spoiler that you would never see him at any other race for a region 11, but you knew when you went to Prairie city or Reno or Kerman, you went to these tracks, you knew these ringers would come out of the, the woodwork and, and they'd give you a run for your money at the regional level. Um, and that's what I always loved about that, that series and that type of racing. So if you're out there and you're, well, well how do I break into it? Try it, try it at your home track. If your home tracks, Prairie city, try it. If it's blue max, try it. Um, and you can sit here and kind of overthink the whole thing and, and never put one foot forward towards an actual race, but just get out there and just go do it. And, and let me chime in one more time. I'm so sorry, Ashley, yeah, but this is really important to me because this is my whole mantra. So, uh, I got two examples that are true and this is real. And it made me think right then and there, like, oh, my God, this is what's wrong. Because there's nothing wrong, but this is the hurdle. So the most recent example is we were building some corner worker stands at the track, right? We got some really nice ones done, just like Dixon. Really nice roofs, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't matter. What I'm getting at is I had to go to a lumber yard. And I don't, I don't know wood, let alone measurements, let alone roof shit. I don't know any of it. So do you know, when I walked into this lumber yard with all these contractors and they're, give me 16 eight penny nickels and give me four one by twos. And I was like, oh my God, I don't even want to go up here and order this wood because I'm going to say, can I, there's a, one thirty second. I never mind. And I just wanted to leave immediately. So, how do you feel? Whether you're a distinguished businessman or woman, or a young child, and you walk into a cart track or shop, and you don't know the the lingo or the verbiage or the part you're looking for. And I'm going to say I'm super disappointed in our industry because we, not me, 
and I'll say that proudly, but we make people feel little. That has to stop. There were some mechanics on your show a couple of weeks ago. You know, one in particular talking about this kid and don't know shit. And I just tell him and I lost all respect for that guy. That is nonsense. If we NorCal would like to have, or carding, would like to have people feel comfortable and willing to spend a dollar or a thousand or 10,000 with you, if you make them feel small once, I guarantee they're bigger than you or me. They're gone. And that is the most asinine thing that I can think of doing is making someone feel silly because they're trying to buy a tie rod or a go-kart and they don't quite have the words right or they're not really sure. And we, again, not we, I don't. Can I, can I give you, can I give you an example of like what I've run into as well? is like so working with norcal carters now we get a lot of messages and emails and questions hey how do i get into carding okay so in the beginning i had to actually like put my mentality in okay let's think about this as if i know no one in carding because for me, yeah. it's different because for me, it's like my first question is, well, where are you at? OK. And then if they say Sacramento, then I'm saying, OK, Prairie City, boom, talk to Donald. OK. But I've also been in the industry for for a while. So for me, it's like different because I know what the answer to the question is. But. When we get these people that are like, how do I get into carding? And I'm just like, how do they, how do you not like, how do you not know? But Jason's like, okay, we have to remember, like, they're coming to us for the info. So I've now had to put myself in this place where I have to remember a lot of these people, they don't know who Donald is. They don't know who Austin at Speed Sense is. They don't know who Sunny at GFC is. They don't know who all these people that we know. So it was kind of like humbling to remember like, hey, there are people that that know nothing that want to get into carding as well. And you're right. Like we can't make them feel like, oh, you know nothing. So sorry, got your bad luck type thing. Come and join us. Um. Yes, there are also how-to videos on Norco. I'm plugging myself. I'm sorry because over the past couple of years, what Donald just said has been so evident of, of tech help, support, et cetera, for that brand new guy. And so a couple of years ago, I started doing the, – the veterans are going to say, oh, those are stupid videos. But we all had a day one. We all – didn't know what a tie rod end ball thing was called, you know, now we know it's a heim joint, you know, or a tie rod or a steering shaft. So I started doing these quick little videos, like how do I measure my wheel hubs? What wheel hubs do I have? How do I measure my gas tank? How do I do this? How do I do that? And they're, they're, they're tailored for that brand new guy. So that way when they get, the no, but see, that's the thing. Those guys already own a cart and that's great. And we can help them. And you can put videos and you can guide them on measurements and, and all that's wonderful. But Ashley is talking about how do I get involved? Do I need yeah. to mail in a check and get a certification? These are honest questions. And honestly, as soon as I'm going to use me as an example, if I go into the lumber store and the guy behind the counter says, hey, don't worry about it. Let me show you where this wood pile is. This is what you're looking for. I'm going to say, oh, man. thank the Lord. I yeah. can I can buy it, but I don't know. I don't know. 
But as soon as he looks at me and goes, do you mean shingles? Are you talking about shingles, you idiot? Then I'm going to say, actually, I forgot my wallet. I'll be right back. And I'm never coming back. So we yeah, have to be very, very really careful. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the All only right. thing, actually, this makes me, this makes me mad. Like we have to be patient. Okay. That's it. Another, another thing that got me too was, um, all the K one speed guys who think, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, the top leaguer at K one speed, like pro night or whatever so then they come out to the track and it's like what is this and i'm like exactly but i also need to have that mentality like yes those k1 guys don't know about carding so yes i'm biased but they don't know but this is all great conversation we are getting over our time we're gonna start going through with final thoughts and closing out um, we'll start with the juniors, then senior, then Donald, okay? All right, so Trenton, you are up first. Shout outs, plugs, anybody you want to um, say what's up to. And yeah, go ahead, close us out. Um, I'd, I'd like to give a shout out for Donald, just running a really great cart track um, in the epicenter of California. Um, my mom, my dad the Agan family for all their continuous support. Um, Tom for really great engines and always being there, just like, just making sure we're all good and up to date on everything and just checking in. Um, the whole Barnwell family for the hospitality and letting me stay at the track in their trailer so I don't have to go to my grandma's and wake up at, six something in the morning when my mom has to go work registration. <clears throat> All right. Shout out to the track workers. <laughs> yes. Shout out to the track workers. All right. Trenton, I'm going to drop you from the stream. Don't go anywhere though. Okay. All right. Up next, we have Steven Iser. Go ahead. Shout outs, plugs, and go ahead and close our show. I'd like to give a shout out to my dad, my mom, uh, Speed Sense Motorsports, Austin, Mikey, Nathan, Grant, uh, especially Nathan for um, taking my cart to his house and uh, building it and helping me uh, win this weekend. It was really, it was a lot better than last week, and I'll tell you. Um, I'd also like to thank. A Donald you for putting on a lot of great races, making Prairie City a better place and carting a better place. All right. Thanks, Steven. You know the drill, buddy. We'll be we'll see you in a sec. All right. Travis Mitchell, go ahead and sh shout outs, plugs, final thoughts. Yep. Um <clears throat> so big thank you to my dad. He's always been my mechanic and always he's still learning still doing this thing but yeah we're getting there so big thank you my my dad being my mechanic my grandpa he's always been huge support um all of my family my girlfriend just everyone that comes out to watch um big huge thank you to donald this yeah last year this year it's just been amazing so you put an amazing track together it's come a long way since you've had it so thank you for that um, KPX, it was a really fun weekend as well with KPX. Um, thank you, you guys, for having me on. This has been pretty fun. So, thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you for Jerry. He built a very good 206 engine this weekend. It was, yeah. Thank you to Jerry from um, Unleashed Power. Thank you to Sweet Tech. They built the KA engine. Great job with that as well. So, yep. All right. Thanks, Travis. All right, Donald. So we did have a question come in. What are some of your bigger plans for the track? So in your final thoughts, can we discuss if you have any bigger plans for the track and what's coming up at Prairie City? Uh, 
One thing on the immediate that I want to talk about is our second 206 race. That's not a plan, but, and I won't ignore Taylor, <clears throat> but while we still got everybody's ear, when I built the calendar for the year, I got a calendar and built the year. And I looked at a lot of other races and did a good, <laughs> tried to do my best to, to just uh, strategically place them. And then I got another calendar that had holidays on the bottom of it. And it said <laughs> Easter on the second one. So I need to change that. I hate, I hate doing that. So I'm, but it's, it's important. Uh, that's a holiday that that's important for kids, for our, our much needed support staff at the track. We all have kids. Kids are racers, adults are racers with kids. So I need to address that. And there's probably a 50, 50 split, like, Oh, just leave it. It's going to be okay. And, and the other 50, you know, uh, that's a really bad idea. So I'm going to listen to that part. Um, and at our drive at our, at the award ceremony at KPX, you know, I said today I was going to spend some time looking at that calendar and I couldn't, it was, you know, fortunately a busy day again, but tomorrow is my Saturday and Wednesday is my Sunday. And I promise to address that and get it on our Facebook and our website. And I'm toying with the idea because there is no room in, uh, April to change it to without really stepping on anybody's toes, which is my mission not to do. So I'm toying with the idea of a Saturday race and leaving it on the same weekend. Uh, yeah, David Bixler, you're absolutely right. And that could be just fine. And so give me a moment to, to kind of give my brain a rest. I'll tell you what, doing this which i love and i would never change for the world i'm not physically tired i don't do that much physical work but my brain is dead um so i want to soak it all in enjoy the last couple weekends that we had they were so fun so fun i cannot wait for the next club race uh 206 and two stroke and then the fourth round i believe of kpx is going to be so fun we're going to change the track uh for every single two excuse me for every single kpx race that we host there's three this year uh they're going to be a different layout each time and barry you're right an easter egg hunt but i i gotta i gotta stick with it we can't be there sunday i think we're just going to close sunday no matter what and i'm going to do an easter egg hunt at my house with my kids and and we're just going to close but good idea um big news for the track let's see nothing's ever concrete you know but i always always want to keep cleaning it up uh improving things like we when we added the concrete for turn three i was i was really happy to see it put in use the last two weekends, there was zero chains lost, zero chassis being drug and crashes, you know, were not due to that dropping your tire. So the next one is going to be the Grand Prix layout. I need to get on that curb and fix that. But I will say, and I don't think I'm premature because it's it's real now, but there's always been this rumor of uh, our neighbor who owns, you know, thousands and thousands of acres of land and they wanted to haul back when I was 10 years old, you know, and I'm almost 40, but they wanted to haul dirt through our property. And lo and behold, now that it's mine per se, it's actually going to happen. What they're not going to do anymore is look for gold because that's yesterday's news, but they're going to move solar power. So there is slow plans, but plans of putting solar lines above us, which is not really going to impact the track, but what it's going to impact is the grid and the pro shop. You're not allowed to have permanent structures underneath 
high powered solar lines. So uh, I'm an advocate for the track. And when it turns out we need to relocate a couple large structures, that's going to impact the parking lot, which is not going to happen. We do not have enough parking as is, and I only intend on growing. So we're going to impact the track. But there's about two acres of dirt behind the hill and the snake pit that someone's going to have to build me four or five corners and more passing areas and we're going to elevate it. We've got some help with uh, Derek Wilkins, great guy and an earth mover. And we've got some plans to raise it up so everybody can see and then put a nice, beautiful paid for by someone else um, pro shop and double wide, triple wide, whatever we want to do with a deck and move the grid. It's not happening tomorrow. It's not happening next week. It's not going to impact our season and it's not going to impact our driving, but it's probably going to impact their comfort when they're doing construction because I get to have a little bit of say on when and where, and it's going to be like November, December and enjoy the rain, but you can't shut us down. You can't stop us. Uh, there's no interrupting this, this flow. So if they would like to take advantage of their easement. Um, and I hope I'm not speaking out of term. Good Lord, I hope I'm not. But with that being said, that is actually coming to fruition. And it might be the end of this year. But if it impacts the track, the track is only going to prosper from it as far as a change. And again, once, once again, that change We'll just make the track bigger with more corners, more passing, more everything. Um, other than that, if anybody knows how to recycle tires or anybody knows a company that can come pick them up, I'm getting in big trouble and I got to get rid of those. I've been kind and I created a pile where people could throw them. And now I got an email that said, move those or else. Call me tomorrow. Please don't drop your tires off anymore. <laughs> Go ahead. Call me tomorrow. Jason, what? The tires. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Donald. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Donald. All right. No, so... no, you're closing it out. I'm. Cl you're closing it out. Go. All right. Thank you, NorCal Carters, for another great podcast. And if you guys have noticed the new graphics on the on the stream, that is because of Ashley. So uh, we we mentioned last week she's taken over more of the roles of the NorCal Mondays. That's the other thing. Hashtag NorCal Mondays. You can see it right up there in the corner. There it is. I'm backwards. So um, NorCal Mondays. That is Ashley's tag for this show. And um, so exciting things coming up. Um, if Ashley wants to get into the previews for April, she can do that when she closes out this show. But remember, go to Facebook, like our page, go to YouTube, subscribe to our channel. Um, as you can see, we're growing the how-to videos. As we got into, and we're, we're actually going to dive deep into it in April, we already have a show slated for April for how to get into karting because it's like the best sport no one's ever heard of. Or like Donald hint, you know, hinted at that uh, got him pretty upset, which is understandable. It's like sometimes karting is just so unapproachable. It's like it, it doesn't need to be that hard. So in April, it's already on our calendar for content for how to get into karting. We will be looking for guests. I already have a few guests on my on my notepad that are veterans of karting. But if you're brand new into karting or you're just listening to this and you want to have like a frequently answered questions show anything chime in send us an email to norcalcarters at gmail.com or one of our social channels but again right now it's slated for one night as a how to get in the carding show that's not long enough to really go into all of it so it's probably going to get expanded but again that's our part of uh, carding yeah you know, the whole idea of the show is to get new people in and help retain people so uh, with that being said, if we all get one person in the carding this year, we will double by next year. And Ashley's going to close us out. 
All right, homies. So uh, as Jason said, we got April ironed out. We are going to have Cole Nelson Racing. We're going to do, be doing some race recaps. We're going to be doing our How to Get Into Karting show. And the most requested show we have had, the second junior show, will be at the end of April. Okay? I do have open calls out on our Facebook page. Um, we did have a comment. Parents of local racers next. Well, Mama Healy, in May, I'm going to be doing an open call for cart moms for our Mother's Day show. So stay tuned. And if you want to talk about karting, come on my show. You know how to contact us, Facebook, Instagram, and email. Peace, NorCal.